Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday Fam. Pleased to be with you again today. And I've got three special guests with me today Katie Bennett, Nikki Bruce, and Neely Moriarty. How are you guys doing today? Good. Thanks for having us. Good. Hello. Awesome. Well, this is a really special uh, virtual site inspection that we're doing. Uh, three different areas of Illinois in my home state, as many people know. Uh, some places that I've seen before, as well as a few that I've not had a chance to visit. So I think I'm going to learn a lot as we go through this afternoon session here. Um, each of you is going to give a little uh, presentation on some of the cool things that you've got in store for groups as they come through. So why don't we go ahead and kick things off with Katie? So uh, this, this presentation today is talking about specifically some of the cool activities that are available for groups along the waterways. Uh, one of the things we certainly found with COVID is people have a desire to get outdoors more than they have in the past. So um, Illinois, um, you know, of course, being on a Great Lake is also uh, uh, on the Mississippi River, has two major waterways through there. But there's also some other unique water activities and fun spots uh, in, off the major waterways that are great for groups to explore. So we're going to see some of these major attractions today, um, as well as a few of these hidden jewels. So kind of starting out here, let's take a look at just what we're going to be covering today geographically. Illinois obviously is a very big state north to south. So the three areas that we're going to talk through, um, the orange area, area that you can see sort of towards the bottom uh, left of the map is the uh, Great Rivers and Routes region. Uh, that's Katie's area. Uh, Quad Cities as we move up north there, uh, which is roughly, for those of you that have not uh, done a whole lot of traveling through Illinois, we're looking at about two hours uh, west of Chicago is going to be the Quad Cities region. So we're going to be covering that. And then the Heritage Corridor, um, as we go through with Neely, I know you've got a sort of a wide geographic area, uh, Neely. Uh, so roughly a little bit west of that Joliet, uh, LaSalle, Ottawa area, um, as you're going a little bit southwest of the area of Chicago. So um, it'll be, you know, fun, a lot of, lot of geographic territory to cover here, but certainly all within a fairly easy day's drive for folks. So um, starting out here with the Rivers and Routes region, um, Katie, can you talk just a little bit about what is the Great River Road? Yeah, so the Great River Road is the um, first portion of the meeting of the Great Rivers National Scenic Byway. So our region, um, we cover six counties in our region. We're just across the river from St. Louis, Missouri, and we are the starting point for the Great River Road. So it starts in Hartford, Illinois, and we cover the 30, 30 mile stretch um, that we call the Great River Road. And it is considered one of the more scenic drives um, for, the, for the scenic byway. I, I think, you know, those of you that are, are unfamiliar with the area, this looks like coastal California in some areas. I mean, just great scenery here and uh, people that think Illinois is just all flatlands and prairie would be in for quite a surprise as they drive through the area. Correct. Yeah. And it is also, we have the convergence where the Missouri River meets the Mississippi River. That is in Hartford. And then in Grafton is where the Mississippi River meets with the Illinois River. So we have Got all three it. rivers converging. Those of you that are uh, history buffs certainly know about Lewis and Clark. And I think one of the cool things about your area uh, is you've got uh, Lewis and Clark heritage through there. So you talk about uh, uh, that as well as I know uh, locks and dams There's some tours there as well. Absolutely. So um, Hartford, Illinois is where Lewis and Clark camp for the winter before they started the journey. Um, we do have a state museum. It's the Lewis and Clark State Historic Site that is honoring that replica camp. They have a replica camp outside of the museum, as well as um, exhibits inside of the interpretive center. And then right next door to it is the Lewis and Clark Confluence Tower. It's the, the structure that you're seeing in the top left of this photo. Um, they uh, it is an elevator based tour. They'll take you to 50 feet, 100 feet, and 150 feet. And that is overlooking where the Missouri and the Mississippi River um, do converge. Hmm. And then just a little further down the river road in Alton is the Melvin Price Locks and Dam uh, slash National Great Rivers Museum. So they give a great guided tour for groups. I will actually go to the top of the locks um, in an elevator and get to see hopefully some barges or ships going through that locks system. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, one of the cool areas that I encountered in doing some research for this was Grafton. And then we've got a couple of uh, photos here um, up on the screen. Now Grafton's a little bit north of Alton, if I'm not mistaken. 
Correct. It's about 20 miles from Alton, again, driving that Great River Road. Um, and it is just a picturesque little river town. It has shops, wineries, coffee shops, um, all very walkable within about a five to six block um, walk. And we have a lot of dining right on the river. And then the photo that you're seeing in the top right, one of our newest attractions that opened in late 2019, is the Grafton Sky Tour aerial lift. So you actually board either an enclosed gondola or an open air chair down on the river level, ride about 200 feet up the bluffs to Aries Resort, where you can do a group wine tasting. They have lunch or dinner. There's group lodging. Um, if your travelers are more adventurous, they have zip lining. And then they are in the process of putting in um, a BMX bike trail. So kind of a, an additional way for people to be able to enjoy the outdoors. Gotcha. And, and so the gondolas and the chairlift, that's late 2019? Correct. Okay, so a lot of groups would not have experienced that. I know that was something that was foreign to me when I came up on um, some of the photos and doing research here. So it's a pretty cool new attraction. Absolutely. Yes, um, we've been able to get some groups in um, in late 2020. And then we have a lot, a lot of groups scheduled for this year having to reschedule their tours. So we're looking forward to in introducing them to the attraction. Sure. Um, do you know roundabouts the capacity of those gondola cars? They hold six adults and then the open air chairs um two to three people okay well well being one who doesn't like heights myself i would probably choose the the enclosed structure so <laughs> <laughs> obviously being on the mississippi river you guys have got some great waterfront dining as well as river cruising so talk about some of the options that are available for groups sure so one of our our popular cruise option is out of Grafton Harbor. It's called the Hakuna Matata. It's a two level um, ship. So it's the photo in the top right where the open air seating is, or there is enclosed seating on the mid level. They'll host um, one hour sightseeing cruises. You can also do lunch or dinner cruises or some fun um, themed cruises like a Cinco de Mayo or a wine tasting sunset cruise. And then we do also get to work with the spirit of Peoria. They come down about three or four times a year and host day cruises out of Grafton. So we love working with that ship when we can. And then for um, river level dining, the loading dock is one of the most popular. Um, they have a very massive outdoor dining deck right along the Mississippi River. They'll do live music, um, fire pits. Uh, it's just a really fun kind of atmosphere to be able to dine right on the water. Nice. What is the cruise season there typically? When do you guys get on the water and when does it run till? So the Hakuna Matata can be scheduled. It, it works really well with groups. They will schedule cruises as you need them. The ship typically goes into the water late March, early April, depending upon the weather. And then they'll cruise through November if they can. And then the Spirit of Peoria, we typically see July through October. Gotcha, gotcha. So I would imagine some pretty spectacular fall scenery cruises. Absolutely. Those are very popular when you can start to see the colors. And what is nice about our region, um, we also like to always like to remind groups that our fall colors tend to hit late in the month. So we're typically the last week of October, first week of November. So if you are trying to squeeze in an extra fall themed tour, if you could consider coming and hitting this part of the region after you hit your New England's and your other areas earlier in the month. Gotcha. I like that. Good idea. One last thing, Katie, I wanted to ask you is, I know the area historically has been popular for bald eagle watching in the winter mm -hmm. period. So um, why is that, first of all, because I think that's pretty unique, and maybe walk through some of the options for groups that are available during the winter months. So we do see quite a few bald eagles. We also have um, white pelicans, swans, they all, we are on a major flight path for their, their migration season. We, our Audubon Center over in West Alton um, would be the better um, resource for why this is um, takes place in our region. We just feel blessed that it does happen. And so in April or in January and February, um, we do have guides that will take groups on eagle watching um, tour. So they'll help teach you how to use a scope, how to spot the nests along the river, how to tell the difference between a large bird in the air. Is that an eagle or is that a vulture? Um, and so we do have, a, and then there'll also be live e eagle meet and greet events as well. So if, if a group is looking for 
um, kind of a winter trip, we do love to work with them on an Eagle theme. Cool. Well, and again, I, I love the idea of just being able to expand the calendar out a little bit and doing something in the winter months outdoors when uh, people are looking to be a little bit more active and uh, just sort of one of those special experiences. So it's so really cool to put on the calendar. All right. Awesome, Katie. So let's go a little bit north and east to the Heritage Corridor region. Neely, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, Jeff? Good, good, good. So um, I think the first thing I wanted to point out is that we have here up on the screen, um, those of you that get Leisure Group Travel Magazine may have remembered this cover from an Illinois tour planner uh, that we published, I believe it was last year, although it seems with COVID, everything's running together. So it's either uh, this past year or the year before. What are we looking at in that upper left-hand corner? That is the lock and mule, um, the boat that you can take along the uh, canal and it's called the volunteer. It's a replica boat that's pulled by mule that you can see there. That's either Larry or Mo. I don't know which one that is oh, of the cool. mule. So the mule is actually pulling the boat there. It is, yes. Oh, I thought he was just yeah. a passenger or I thought he was just uh, along for a, a stroll along the waterfront. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Now, um, yeah. what's what's some of the history behind the i &M Canal? Well, the i &M Canal really kind of started the area just out of Chicago. Um, it, it is a long, um, a long area there and it it helps a lot with the history is how people took supplies and everything down down the river um and so it really became kind of the um the build up of uh lockport of joliet of all the way down um towards the mississippi river really okay and that's man-made if i'm not mistaken right i mean they physically had to come in there and dig that out I believe so. Yeah. At least part of it, yes. Cool. Okay. Well, it's a, one of the things, you know, being so close to Chicago, I mean, gosh, you know, jo Joliet, which is sort of the start of the Heritage Corridor is 45 minutes with, you know, standard traffic. So being so very close, people might think that it's a metropolis, but just some of the beautiful wide open spaces, uh, one of them being that national tall grass prairie. So, you know, talk about some of the activities out there and, and what that's all about. Yeah, being so close to Chicago, we, we really have a little bit of everything, which is nice. We have a lot of metropolis, but at the same time, we have a lot of prairie. Um, the Medewin National Tallgrass Prairie is a very large area that um, a lot of bison call home. And so you can also walk through the tallgrass area. There's a lot of easy walking with some paved trails for people. Um, you could do groups there. There's some bike rentals. There's a visitor center that you can obviously go and get information before you walk the trails, there's some great bird watching, it's close to Route 66. It's a really great area for a group to walk around and just kind of immerse themselves in the in the natural area of, of, of our area. Very, very pretty through there for sure. So yeah. Um, yeah, can, can you, continuing along the outdoor theme that we have today, um, talk about Starved Rock. I know we've got a, a photo of the, the lodge fireplace there as well as some of the, uh, the touring options. So that's certainly one of the jewels of the area. It absolutely is one of the jewels. Starved Rock area is is beautiful. It's breathtaking, really, and it's and it's beautiful year round. It's not just a summer spring thing. Um, obviously, the the waterfalls are going to be heavier with heavier rainfall, but they're all, also beautiful when they're frozen over in the winter. It is open year round. The lodge is great and um, offers some great group options. You can do many different. Um, lunch options and dinner. They um, have an outdoor veranda. They have a large banquet area as well. And they really cater to some groups that um, they have a little bit for everything. You know, okay. there's dinner shows you can offer, you can do um, room blocks as well. They can do live entertainment, really kind of cater to what the group is doing. Um, the Starved Rock Park area is great for all sorts of different levels. You know, if you want to just walk a little bit and go out and see it, you can just walk a little bit. If you want to take a day of it, you can take a full day and walk all around and you won't see the same thing twice. Cool. It's beautiful with, with the, the valley right down and below there and just overlooking. And it's really a, a natural, beautiful outdoor area for groups to see. Yeah, I, I know that there's some cabins out at Starve Rock. I would imagine that these days, those are more popular than ever. Yes, yes. People love the camping aspect of it, the cabin aspect and being able to kind of be on their own and not with so many people. But what's nice is that Starve Rock Lodge itself is also on the smaller side, but they can easily handle larger groups as well. So you're not in, you know, there's not thousands and thousands of people around. It's really kind of tucked back into nature and it feels like it's always been there. 
Nice. Um, one of the things that I saw pleasantly surprised I like the kayak is you've got some looks like some group kayaking available in the area. Yes, we have some uh, some great kayaking down down in the area. It's right across from Star Rock, so it's really a good central location. They do some wonderful tours and wonderful groups um, based on activity levels, uh, um, and just what they can handle. Mm -hmm. um, they can do everything from just single or double kayaks. You can go up and down um, and just really do whatever you're wanting time-wise, as sure. well as adventure wise as well. And they have some camping and glamping options there as well through through them. Okay, um, do you know, is that the Illinois River that the uh, they kayak on or is that a smaller waterway? No, it is actually the Illinois River. And yeah. you, you'll see a lot of the Starved Rock area. And I believe even from walking around Starved Rock, you can see some of the kayakers down below as well. Oh. Cool. So um, I also throughout the area, just beautiful historic homes and mansions. So what are we looking at here on the screen? Yes, we have some wonderful mansions down in the Starved Rock area that really show the beauty and the history of the area. The Reddick Mansion is the red one there on the top left that is just across the street from where Lincoln and Douglas debated. It is a large home. It just recently went over a $1.4 million restoration. They have some wonderful, um, just to step back in time and to see what was what made it so beautiful. Uh, they have some wonderful group tours there that they can specialize for you depending on your group size and restrictions and it's very centrally located and right across the street from from a wonderful restaurant as well oh. the Hegler Karras mansion that was built in 1870s and it's a 57 room mansion it's beautiful and it has a lot of a lot to do with the industry of the area again they can do group tours depending on sizes it, in the summer and spring they have live music outside and they have um some wonderful events throughout the season as well, but they can also accompany or help other groups do okay. what they want to do as well. Okay, and then the, the bottom photo? Yes, that's the Weber House and Garden. It is, um, it has up to 10 gardens, I believe, hmm. that is all different, different flowers, different themes, different areas. It's a large, large area and wonderful for groups to just kind of walk around, see the area, just kind of immerse themselves in the beauty and the nature of the area. Cool. Um, you, the other thing that I, you know, certainly know being not too, too far from the area is some really cool local authentic restaurants, breweries and such. Uh, let me talk about a few of your favorites. Yes, this one is uh, the Lone Buffalo by Tangled Roots. This is actually one that's across the street from that Reddick Mansion that I talked about before. They are, they call themselves foam to table. They take care of everything from the hops to the beer to the local produce. They try to source as much as they can locally for people. Um, they have some great dishes from pub burgers and salads to ribs and salmon and, and it's really great. Um, we love the Brewmaster Burger is what we love there. Um, they offer brewery tours. They're again, centrally located, which is really nice. It's, you know, you kind of let your group kind of um, see the area and kind of congregate back for lunch. They do groups, they do private rooms and they just um, try to help the locals as much as they possibly can. Sure. Sure. And you mentioned Starved Rock, some, some you know, different dining examples there um, that groups can embark on. Uh, anything else that comes to mind or some big local places that you enjoy in the area? We, I love eating at the Lodi Tap House is great. They offer some wonderful views and it's a great atmosphere. There's a lot of, a couple little downtown areas that just have some great restaurants that you can kind of immerse depending on what you're feeling and wanting to have. So it's, it's, there's a lot of options for everyone, for all the picky eaters and the groups as well. <laughs> cool. Uh, it, you know, lastly, before I uh, switch over to the Quad Cities, uh, I wanted to ask you, we just did a, a really neat piece in Leisure Group Travel on uh, dark tours and uh, you guys are doing prison tours in Joliet. Uh, I know there's a pretty historic, anybody who's a fan of the Blues Brothers would remember uh, the, I think it's the Statesville prison that was there. Is that the one that they're doing tours at? Yes, so it's the old Joliet prison and it's um, been re restored to as much as it can. And currently they are doing tours, um, group tours. We can kind of cater them to how a group wants to, to learn about, but you can get into some areas back in the prison that the general public doesn't necessarily get to walk into. They're great groups led through their museum in Joliet. There's a prison park in that area that you can walk around and really just see what prison life was like and seeing um, the area there. It's really, it's historic and it's, it's a little creepy and it's really great um, to, to take your time there. 
Gotcha. Very fun. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. So let's uh, transition here and go uh, a couple hours west of Chicago to the Quad Cities. How you doing, Nikki? Good. How are you? Good, good. So talk a little bit about group, what groups can explore as they come through to the Quad Cities region. Yes. Well, in the Quad Cities, we love our groups. Uh, being a bi-state region right along the Mississippi River, along the Great River Road um, in both Iowa and Illinois, um, we have a lot of things to do. Um, pictured in this first slide um, are a couple of our deer attractions. Um, the top left and also what is behind you on your screen there is our John Deere Pavilion. And the pavilion is set up um, kind of like an interactive display. Um, this um, picture um, is a little bit older, um, but they try to change it up a couple times a year. So there's combines that you can hop on and actually get in. Um, there's simulators that you can actually get in and um, take a test drive and see how well you would be if you were a farmer. Um, it's really set up to kind of learn about the past, the present and the future of agriculture and how our farmers really feed America. And of course, how, how John Deere you know, impacted farming. Gotcha. The lower picture there, um, as well as the upper right, um, that is actually our Deer Harvester Works tour. And if you have not been on that, that is such an amazing tour. Um, you actually come in, um, you start in a little pavilion area where, uh, again, you know, there's things that you can get immersed in while you wait for the tour. Um, then they actually take you in to where the um, harvesting equipment is actually being built. Um, usually the guides are all retired from John Deere, so they can talk your ear off about anything and everything deer for as long as you're willing to listen. Cool. Um, the picture on the lower left, you see that they have headphones for, to protect their hearing because again, the machines are being built. Um, and then it's about an hour and a half tour and you go all the way through and see one being built from start to finish, how it's painted, where that beautiful green came from. It's a very cool tour. Nice. Being on the Mississippi River, uh, just a unique location, you guys have got a lot of really interesting history there. Uh, what are we looking at here on the screen? We do have a lot of interesting history. So in our area in Illinois, um, we actually have the confluence where the Rock River and the Mississippi River join. Um, and on the lower left, that is actually um, a statue of Black Hawk. And um, for generations, our area actually um, served the Fox and the Sauk nations um, for generations. Um, the last armed conflict was actually when America um, confronted Black Hawk in 1832. And our region um, really decided that we wanna keep that history alive. So at our Black Hawk State Historic Park, um, the lodge is what you're looking at in the background. The Hallberg Indian Museum is inside there. So it's a place that you can learn a lot of the history um, of the two different um, tribes that were in our area, as well as a great place um, to go hiking and to view a lot of wildlife as well. Um, so that's a beautiful place to explore in Rock Island, Illinois. Um, the two pictures above are from the Rock Island Arsenal. Um, so we actually have a federal working arsenal still in the Quad Cities. Um, and the, on the left is Colonel Davenport, um, his historic site. Um, so that was actually his home when he lived on the island. Um, and you, it's on the National Register of Historic Places, as you can tell from the photo. So groups can go in there um, and they can kind of go back in time and learn a little bit about um, why Colonel Davenport came to our area. Um, very interesting um, history with that man. <laughs> and then on the right-hand side, um, we actually have a national and a Confederate cemetery on the island. Oh. Um, as well as Lock and Dam 15. Um, so you can get out on the lock and see um, people lock through. And the bridge that you're looking at um, when you're on that lock is, um, has a little interesting story as well, but it's actually the first railroad bridge built in the United States. Uh, and a young man named Abraham Lincoln, you may have heard about, has some interesting <laughs> history with this island and that, um, that bridge as well. <laughs> so, so that's actually an island between Iowa and Illinois. It is. It is. Oh, yep. Okay, cool. So, yep. So the um, so the bridge that goes through it, um, when you when you're on it, you kind of come to a T. And to the right, um, if you're coming from um, um, Illinois to Iowa, if you're going to the right, you're actually going onto the island, and you'll have to you know have a background check and check to get onto the island. Otherwise, you go to the left, and then you are in downtown Davenport. Okay, so, and that's a, yeah, and that's still right a working. In, it's still a working plant that you said. So it is. Yep. It is. Yep. Interesting. 
Okay. Well, um, Katie talked about earlier um, some of the river cruising options available. Um, you guys certainly no stranger to having a beautiful riverfront there, as well as some um, scenic day cruises, and uh, interested also to hear about the channel cat. Yes, yes. Um, so the top left picture there is our beautiful Celebration Bell. Um, she is docked in downtown Moline, Illinois. So not very far from the John Deere Pavilion and our John Deere historic sites. Um, but she is actually the largest non-gaming vessel on the upper Mississippi River. She can fit over 500 people at one time. Um, you can kind of see that she has the three different docks there, as well as the uh, captain's table up there on the left where the first American flag is. Um, we do have an elevator as well, which is pretty unique to these large vessels. So if any of the groups um, have issues with mobility, um, you just have to let one of the staff members know um, and you can take that elevator elevator as well. So there's no worries that access is all free. Um, a lot of different tours. They have sightseeing cruises to three and a half hour lunch cruises where you're served sticky buns in the morning and then a huge meal that's made all on board by the staff fresh every day. Um, and then one of the most popular is their um, dinner cruises. Um, so new last year, even though not a lot of people have gotten to see them with the pandemic, but we actually have new entertainment this year. And and they are absolutely amazing, but we got them from the Disney Cruise Line. So we are so lucky to have them. Wow. Um, so there's different themes that they um, do music, interactive things with. Um, new this year, they're doing a couple dueling pianos on board. So a lot of fun things you can do on the Celebration Bell. And then obviously get, you know, the um, the views and the historic, you go by the Rock Island Arsenal. So you really get immersed in a lot of what the Quad Cities is while you're on there. Cool, cool. So um, what about waterfront activities? Yeah, so um, to the right there, you can kind of um, see some bikers there. So in the Quad Cities, we have over 100 miles of bike trails, as well as some pretty unique um, parks. If you're a little more adventurous to where you want to go um, off-roading, um, we have some parks that do that as well. So that's pretty exciting. Obviously, fishing um, is very, very important <laughs> in our region, and people love doing that. Um, on the lower left there, um, kind of unique. Um, it's actually our Channel Cat water taxi. So for one small fee, you can hop on that water taxi and you can go to three different um, downtown locations throughout the Quad Cities. And you can just use it as a leisurely boat ride or you can use it to hop off um, in a different area, even a different state, like I said, being Illinois and Iowa, um, and spend the afternoon shopping, spend the afternoon dining, and then hop back on and use that as your mode of transportation. Okay, so it's like a somewhat continuous uh, ferry type service. Yes, yep, yep. And obviously, depending on the weather, um, sometimes the schedules change a little bit and, you know, the, the water depth and everything. But at each location, um, they do have a schedule for that day. So there's no questions of when you'll be picked up next or and you can pretty much get anywhere in the Quad Cities within 20 minutes. So if it's going to be a little bit of the wait, you could go to the next port and hop on there. Okay, awesome. So um, one thing that I found in again, doing a little research for this was a lot of see it made sort of hands-on experiences uh, that you've got available. So uh, talk about what uh, some groups can see and do there. Yes, in the Quad Cities, we, we love our Make It Here program. Um, so on the upper left there, um, we have um, our hot glass. So the young man on the left is um, actually assisting the owner of hot glass there um, and blowing a piece of glass. So tours can actually go in there. Um, with this group, with groups in here, I usually do recommend um, earlier in the morning to the early afternoon because it does get a little warm, but if you're all right with that, then you, whenever is fine. Um, but yeah, you can actually see a demonstration just like this of how the process from start to finish works in, um, in blowing a piece of art, a glass art, which is really unique. Okay. Um, a couple of our downtown properties, you actually can see their pieces on display in all of the rooms as well, which you can purchase, which is kind of cool. Um, on the lower left, we are lucky enough to have a couple different wineries in our area. Um, so you can go in and you can have a wine slushy, you can do a wine tasting, um, you can spend it, you know, spend a girlfriend's day shopping and trying um, the different wineries throughout our region. And then on the upper right there, that's one of our breweries. Um, we actually have the Quad City um, Ale Trail in the Quad Cities because we are lucky enough. We, I think we're at 17 different breweries now. Holy cow. Um, That's yeah, <laughs> we have a lot. So you really could make 
make some time and drinking. Not that I recommend doing that all at once, but if well, you're you on a coach, take the channel cat to, to, to eat your <laughs> the channel cat, be on your coach. Yes. <laughs> but over time you can come back and you can earn prizes for drinking beer on the ale trail as you progress through visiting them all. <laughs> and those are all locally owned and operated. They are. Yep. Uh, Awesome. Okay. Yes. Um, and then um, local group friendly restaurants, dining, anything that comes to mind? Yes. Um, one of my favorites um, downtown, well, well, I have a lot of favorites, but I might be biased, but uh, one of my favorites for groups um, in downtown Moline area, just right across the street um, from the John Deere Pavilion, um, is the River House Bar and Grill. Um, it's a two-story um, brick building right in the downtown area, uh, pretty walkable from everything um, in that area. Everything's only about two to three blocks um, and about a half a block from the river. Um, okay. You you can get uh, seafood, you can get, um, burgers are my favorite there. They have amazing nachos. Um, one of my favorite items there um, is the lettuce wraps. So delicious. Um, another one in that um, kind of general facility is Laga Marcino's. If you're just kind of in the mood for something old fashioned, they have amazing homemade sandwiches, but they're actually an old fashioned um, soda um, fountain. So you can actually sit on the old bar and get the homemade hot fudge. That's really good. Um, and then we have a couple um, different um, Bass Street Chop House and Johnny's Italian Steakhouse if you're looking for a little bit more of an upper class meal while you're downtown. Um, but those are some of my favorite. Good, good. Well, ho hopefully people have something more than a bologna sandwich during these lunch and learns. <laughs> yes, There's but the ice cream makes up the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, well, thank you. Very informative. And, and I know from experience, there's a lot of really cool things to see and do in the area, being so close to Chicago, a lot of history, yes. you know, the, the Deer Pavilion, great opportunity to, the, you know, sort of see it made. Um, you know, Deer is just an iconic manufacturer. So, you know, a lot of great fun activities to do. Yes, we are very lucky. Thanks for having us. Yep. All right, so I've got the contact information there on the screen. Before we open up for questions, I'll also let you know that we're going to go ahead and drop this into the chat feature. So if you had specific questions for either Katie, Nikki, um, uh, Neely, as well as Kate, who is up the Heritage Corridor, they're looking for some preformed itineraries that can help you with that. So we'll go ahead and drop that directly into the chat feature. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Dave and open this up for questions.